Hello everyone, this is Ezra, and today I'm going to be talking about something that I myself wondered a lot about, and I noticed a lot of other people asked questions about it on Ultimate Guitar, and they were asking for asking people for lessons on this. And what this is, is or what I'm going to be teaching you about, is how to shred and play guitar solos like Jeff Hanneman and Kerry King from Slayer. Uh, so what you need to have right now is your guitar, because you can't learn anything if you don't have your guitar. Trust me, I've tried that. Uh, it should be plugged into a distortion pedal, and you should have an amp that's actually on. And your guitar should have a whammy bar of some kind. I don't know, I just use a Floyd Rose because that's what feels the most comfortable. Uh, but you could, you could use, you could learn this with a Stratocaster. That wouldn't be the best, but you could still try. Uh, I recommend some guitar that's specially designed for metal and shredding. All right, so let's take a look at how to solo like Slayer. <laughs> forum, if someone says, how do I solo like, and names one of the guitarists, people always say, um, oh, just forget all your musical theory, or forget the difference between major and minor, or don't take guitar lessons if you're a beginner. And it's kind of true, because, well, most Slayer solos, especially the ones of the super fast songs like Angel of Death and Raining Blood, just sound like a random barrage of notes. It sounds like they're doing this. But they're not. So there's a lot of weird things with them. They play the wrong keys uh, over whatever the backing instruments are doing. In the Seasons in the Abyss solo, Carrie King plays uh, G major, G minor, and then switches to A major, and there's no reason for that to happen. I guess it could work, but it's not the notes that are in the riff behind it. So, basically, if you want to play like Carrie King, uh, choose a random scale, no matter what what key you're supposed to be playing over, and just play a bunch of notes in that scale. Any way you want, just come up with a run of some kind in that scale that would sound perfectly normal on its own. Play it, and then play it super fast over the wrong key. Uh, so hammer-ons and pull-offs would probably be helpful here. Speed picking is definitely helpful because you're going to be playing it super fast. And there's also some sweep picking involved if so there's some little like <laughs> stuff going on in the Angel of Death solo except it's probably way way faster um, so yeah so just completely <laughs> except with the correct notes <laughs> Pick a scale, a random scale. Maybe you could even draw a scale out of a hat and use that one. As long as it doesn't sound good, it'll work as a Slayer kind of solo. All right, so let's look at the next tip. Uh, so I did mention earlier that you won't be true thrash if you don't have a whammy bar and that is because it is essential to the Slayer solo sound. I like that, Slayer solo sound. Uh, because Kerry King, the bald one, is considered to do with the whammy bar what Kirk Hammett did with the wah pedal, which is completely overuse it in really unnecessary places and kind of repetitive ways. So, uh, 
what Carrie King would do a lot of times, what I figured out anyway, I mean, it sounds right, is he would press down on the bar and then play a normal scale run. Like, I'll even do a pentatonic triplet run right now. So, that's what a lot of those random notes are. Uh, and then also he would do whammy bar dives, lifts, harmonic kind of dives, like a dime squeal kind of idea. Uh, and so yeah, incorporating those in as many ways as possible. If you don't, if you're writing a solo in the style of Slayer and you have a run and you don't know what should come after it, but you know what needs to come in like two measures, when the key switches, add a whammy bar trick of some kind, a really long one, like a drawn out lift or something. Jeff Hanneman also kind of overused the whammy bar, but he, he would never play a whole solo with it pressed down. He would, uh, he would just use it a few times in each solo, which that does sound excessive, and it really is, but it's just part, part of the sound. So if you want to play like Slayer, overuse your whammy bar. All right, let's move on to the next tip again. All right, so this next part was a big part of their solos on their first two or three albums, like uh, Show No Mercy, Haunting Chapel, and Hell Awaits. Uh, you hear this a lot on the solos on those albums. And that thing that we are talking about this time is uh, just tremolo picking super fast runs on the high E string. So kind of a... And for this, you really don't have to have a scale you're writing it in. Just choose some notes that sound kind of okay together, kind of weird. And that gives it kind of the dissonant feeling, uh, out of place notes. And that was probably where the whole origination of Slayer's completely out of place solos uh, be, uh, was. So. <coughs> It, it was typically used uh, at the beginnings of solos, especially on Show No Mercy, and in a way, or not, not necessarily at the beginning of a solo, but when Jeff and Carrie were trading off solos like they did a lot, if when one of them started a new solo, they would a lot of times do something like this. So if you don't... <laughs> If you can't tremolo pick that fast already, first of all, why are you watching this video? Second of all, practice that if you want to play like Slayer. If you can't tremolo pick fast, you can't even play a riff by Slayer. So, just choose some notes as really high up, probably in the highest octave of the high E. Uh, pick them randomly, do some variations, and then choose some way to transition into the next part. So. Okay, now let's look at the next. All right, so this is going to be the last tip, actually, and this one, I know it sounds horrible, but it's what they did, especially on the uh, Rain and Blood, South of Heaven, and Seasons in the Abyss albums. Uh, what Carrie and Jeff would try to do with their solos is they would try to recreate the screams of people being tortured and... Uh, uh, I can prove it. I don't have the link, but there's an interview out there somewhere where one of them said that. And it it kind of does sound like it. So what you would hear a lot of times is uh, while they were switching off solos, and you can't really tell they're switching off, their tone isn't that much different, especially on Rain and Blood. They, you would hear a solo and the solo would keep going but it was actually a diff the other guitarist playing and over that there would be just like a kind of like a really high pitched 
squeal with some vibrato, and it's kind of the ah! kind of thing. But it's uh, that's a huge part of some of their more popular. Well, I shouldn't say popular, but their bigger albums, their more respected albums, is uh, trying to create the feel of a torture chamber with an audio recording. So just, like, tons of harmonics should be incorporated, and using the whammy bar with that will make it a lot better, because a pinch harmonic by itself is really boring. And sounds kind of annoying, too. You have to vibrato it at least. If you don't have a whammy bar, vibrato it. But if you don't have a whammy bar, why are you watching this video? You shouldn't do that, because you can't play like Slayer without a whammy bar. All right. That's it for today. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more. I'll probably do more videos like this if, uh, if you guys comment and say you enjoyed it. All right, that's all for today. Bye.